Hi, I'm Jill Heinerth. I want to share with you what I learned from getting bent. Hi, I'm Jill Heinerth, tech diver, instructor, and underwater explorer, here again. I know this video series was supposed to be three parts long, but I thought I would offer one more installment. After 7,500 dives or more, I have learned a few things. Perhaps as an older, wiser diver, I can share these thoughts with you so that you can plan safe and enjoyable dives. About 20 years ago, I got bent on an exploration project with plenty of high intensity diving at depths nearing 400 feet, 120 meters deep. It happened to me. I was literally thousands of dives into my career and thought it would never happen to me. With clear retrospective vision, I realized that I've probably suffered more than one DCS hit in my life. Once I knew what it felt like, I admitted there were other tired dives or a sore shoulder that might well have been attributed to DCS. Hyperbaric physician Dave Sawatsky reminds me, quote, when you suffer from DCS, even if you're treated and all symptoms resolve, in many cases, you most likely still have resulting tissue damage. There are lots of examples of people getting bent in the same location a second or even a third time. The fact that you've been bent suggests that you might be at more of a risk for developing DCS than someone who's never been bent. Armed with that advice from Dave, and with the benefit of having participated in Dan decompression research over the years, I have made a few minor changes to my diving practices. I spend a little bit of extra time on my last stop, and I continue to move my body throughout DECO to ensure my blood is circulating and that off-gassing is optimized. If I was active during the on-gassing phase of my dive, then I remain mobile during the DECO. I also ensure that my thermal condition stays as balanced as possible if I was warm on the dive, then I better not get cold on deco or I'll be risking a slower off-gassing phase. These changes are based on logic and a desire to never have to experience a mandatory chamber ride again. Overall, staying a bit longer underwater has given me a chance to see manta rays, a swarming school of squid as the sun dropped below the horizon. These are memorable experiences that I would not have missed for the world. There is no mathematical algorithm in the world that will ever guarantee your safety. It's also unfair to blame a device if you get bent. I have a pretty good idea that my personal choices on that project tipped me over the edge, resulting in DCS. For me, it was the second day of extremely deep diving with no support and a high physical workload. I have completed other dives, one over 22 hours long, and been fine. I have friends who have been bent on simple recreational dives for no apparent reason. DCS is a sports injury. It can be minor, as in a small rash, or major, as in paralysis. And like any other sport, there's a spectrum of injuries that can happen as a result of participation. Use your diving computer armed with the knowledge of how it works so that you can make good, sensible choices about personal risk. Your diving computer will open up a world of opportunities and adventures to you and will help inform you about how to partake in those adventures as safely as possible. Reviewing dive data afterwards will also help inform you about how to have safer practices in the future. Check out more of my videos on intotheplanet.com. I'd like to thank Sunto for supporting this educational video series.